Hello Gemini and welcome to your 2023 Astro Clock Forecast. If you're new here, welcome. I'm Leila, the Lunar Reader, and I've been doing Astro Clocks for a few years now for the annual forecast. Recently, I asked a question to the community if you still wanted us to do Astro Clocks for 2023, and the response was a resounding yes. So I'm delighted to be doing Astro Clocks again, and I want to announce to you that I'll be soon holding a workshop specifically on the Astro Clocks to share with you my secrets with the Astro Clocks that go well beyond what we do in this video forecast. So be sure to stay tuned to that. I'm going to have a link here and below and sign up to the email list because you'll get more details in there as well. So Gemini, welcome to this 2023 forecast reading. I'm so excited to be doing it. My deck is ready. It is always shuffled thoroughly between readings. I just like to do a bit of a hand over hand, just getting ready to tune in. And let's go ahead and deal out this Astro Clock. Okay, Gemini, here is your Astro Clock. As you can see, uh, we've got all 36 cards on the table. Uh, so all of the cards are going to show up. This means that we're going to get the challenging cards, the positive cards, the neutral cards. All of them are here. What makes the Astro Clock unique to you is the combinations across the different groups of cards and the order of the cards. As you can see, I start dealing at 12 o'clock here at midnight, but I start reading at 1 o'clock for January and I go around the clock month by month. Now before we get into this Gemini, I sort of like to get a, an overview of the Astro Clock, sort of orient myself. Where are these cards, that, those cards, the different kinds of cards? I like to start by looking for the challenging cards. And I find the whip here in August and it's right next to the sun. So this is going to easily overcome uh, the challenges of the whip. We have the mouse and clouds here in October. Uh, these are not particularly challenging and the tree is a nice and calm card. And we have the snake with the book, which is a combination of secrecy. I'm not sure this is challenging. We have the coffin in here. Again, it's not necessarily challenging. And that's really interesting, uh, uh, Gemini, because uh, so far I've been seeing that uh, whereas we normally have two to three challenging months in an astro clock, this year it's looking a bit lighter. Uh, I'm seeing one or two months uh, so far across the sign. So this is good news. Looking for the positive cards. This is lovely for money. We've got the star with the fish. Like we said, we have the sun that helps overcome uh, the whip. The clover is in here with the flowers. This is a very beautiful lucky break. And the key with the ship and anchor also very positive. Now the relationship cards, we've got the woman here with beautiful feminine energies, the moon and child. We've got the dog with these lovely cards, the man at midnight. We've got the garden here. This can't point to um, maybe networking, but really with the bear, mm, I'm thinking something a little bit different. We've got the heart and fox. This is curious. This can mean that someone is half-hearted and it could be you. Uh, Gemini can't dismiss these possibilities. So just as an overview, wait, the travel cards. The road is in here. Here's the rider and mountain. And where's the ship? Where is the ship? There it is. Oh, so here there's like a concentration of travel cards. So maybe, tra and the anchor. So maybe traveling can be earlier in the year for you. In general, Gemini, I'm seeing that your year is pretty easy. Uh, no drama. Not seeing much drama and lots of, um, there are a few lucky turns of, of events here. These are positive energies. This is a helpful uh, overcoming of a challenge here. And the rest of the cards look pretty easy. So with this said, let's get into the month by month because when we get into the details of the triplets, then we also weave um, deeper kind of energies that unfold throughout the year. Okay, starting with January. So these are nice cards. We have the Rider, Mountain, and Ring. So the Ring brings in a relationship, a connection. The Rider can be about travel, and the Mountain can uh, suggest a place in a different location. Uh, so you could be going somewhere to connect with people. Maybe it's family and other kind of ties that you have. And also you could be looking at building ties uh, with a certain uh, environment or in a different place. So this can be pretty exciting in the sense that first it's getting out of your space, it's exploring options, and uh, second it could be 
are really nice to connect with people. The mountain is sometimes associated with everything online. So maybe you're looking to expand online or um, maybe broaden your outreach or connect with certain people online. In all cases, I think it's great for relationships, for connections. And um, with the writer, there is this idea of perhaps taking some initiative to reach out, to get in touch, to connect. So definitely this idea of connection, connection and outreach and possibly travel are suggested by the first three cards in January. Now February is also a nice set of cards. It's powerfully positive thanks to the key in the middle. The key is a card of success, of breakthroughs, of solutions and intelligence. And uh, with the ship here, you could be getting a, like an opportunity that pushes you forward in a certain direction. It's like there is an opportunity to set sail somewhere. There is a breakthrough. There is the green light to move forward. Uh, the thing about the anchor is that it comes before the ship. So it's like there's a kickoff. So it's like you were waiting, you were like in place, and then you get the key and ship and you're able to move forward. So these are really good cards for forward movement, adventure. Uh, the ship is also really good with all things business and enterprise. So again, there is this idea of an outreach and of expanding and of connecting uh, that we're seeing between January and February. Also, uh, the anchor has a lot to do with security, confidence, and a sense of uh, standing strong, as it were. So when we see it uh, with the key and ship, it tells us that you have um, a lot of resourcefulness within you, you have a lot of solutions within you, you know what to do. Uh, so really with the key, Gemini, tune into your sense of um, intuition. I think you also have an inner kind of direction, you have an inner rudder, you know, you want to tune into your inner knowing because you know where you're heading, you know what to do. So these are some pretty empowering cards and they bring that sense of outreach. Now March is a little bit tricky because we have the fox and the fox is a trickster. It tends to suggest someone who is not transparent, someone pretty clever, and with the heart, I often read it as someone who is half-hearted, so not really honest about how they feel. Now with the cross here, it can bring a bit of a challenge. You could maybe um, realize that someone's feelings are not 100% genuine. Now I'm not saying that you do anything about this here, uh, but um, you do want to sort of take it into consideration because it can affect the kinds of decisions you make with this person. Now, the fox is not necessarily just one person. What I'm thinking is that in your process of outreach here, you know, because the March cards come after these cards here, uh, perhaps in your, during your uh, explorations, your outreach, you're probably going to come across some characters that are not really aligned with what you're offering or what you're after. And that is fine, but it's the idea of being able to you know, distinguish between those who are and those who aren't so that you can uh, make sound decisions. In another sense, Gemini, it's possible that you ought to keep some things to yourself. Uh, perhaps it's wiser not to, um, you know, share your feelings outright, you know, keep, uh, keep some things under your hat and share things selectively. Uh, the fox is about being clever. It's not just a trickster. It also has positive aspects and you can tap into these aspects to get an advantage. It's very good with diplomacy, with being tactful, with being roundabout, and also with knowing how to sort of, you know, charm people to, uh, to win them over. So you might want to apply some of these uh, strengths of the fox as you go about, you know, expanding here and discovering options. Now May is a lovely set of cards. We have the Clover and Flowers, two very bright cards in the deck. So they are going to point to wish fulfillment, opportunities, happiness, uh, really landing on both feet. And with the Scythe and Clover, I tend to read this as a lucky break, like almost literally. So it sounds like here you're about to break through. And um, you know, these um, you know, these first few months, they're really about navigating towards a certain opportunity. It's just that March uh, holds you back a little bit and asks you to sort of be still because something is in the making. And we see that in April, it breaks through. So you are going to get that lucky break. Now, the thing about these cards is that they're pretty general. And of course, when we get to the monthly forecasts, we're, we're going to dive more deeply into all of this, Gemini. So tune in. Um, 
And uh, so these cards don't really tell us if this is at work, in your relationships, or with money, or in another area of your life. It's just a, a general dynamic here where there is definitely a lucky break, a breakthrough, and uh, hopes and wishes materializing. So this is a really uh, powerful month in your year where there seems to be a shift in your luck or your good fortune, as it were. Moving on to May, and here we have some relationship cards that manifest. Uh, so between May and July, we're seeing relationships. Earlier, it was more about you know your sense of direction and where you're heading. Actually, it's a pretty powerful opening uh, of the year for you. In May, we have these beautiful feminine cards. We have the moon, the child, and the woman. Uh, so this can be a few things. Um, there can be a, a new connection that you make. You meet someone new, and this is looking like someone supportive. Um, the moon can also suggest uh, an invitation or a proposal. So perhaps you're invited to do something, or um, you know, there's a proposal that comes your way, and this woman could be the one who puts it forth. It's also possible that this has to do with having children. Uh, these are very feminine cards, and we've got the woman and child. And so it's possible if you're after having a family, if you are, you know, in a situation like this, this can be a really good time for it. And it can also apply to someone else in your life, like a close family member or a friend. The woman can really represent just about anyone, but the idea is that she would be someone who's pretty close or pretty relevant uh, to your life, to your situation. Um, in all cases, these are very beautiful cards for a new beginning and a gentle opening. Uh, they're also really good cards for creativity. And actually the flowers is the third creativity cards in the Lenormand deck as far as my dictionary is concerned. And we're seeing them you know, pretty close to each other here. So I think that between April and May, there is a sense of expression that can come through. I think it really builds on the um, the initial uh, combinations here because there was this sense of outreach and expansion and growth and uh, it really does pour into here as well. Uh, the only thing here is that a person comes into the picture to motivate this or to be part of it in one way or another. So really good creative energies here between April and May. Looking at June, it just continues. Um, lots of positive energies here. The star is a wish fulfillment card. The fish is the money card. And so together there is abundance. There is also the possibility of making more money. Uh, the dog can represent an employee, a friend, a colleague, a customer. Really the dog can, can also be a wide range of people. It just tends to represent people in our peer group generally. And when we see it with these cards, there are beautiful opportunities here. This can be about expanding your customer base if this is about your business because of the fish. This can be about getting help and support from people. It can be, for example, at work where you're appreciated and there's wonderful collaborations. Any sort of way the dog fits into your environment uh, the star and fish really deliver a lot of success and abundance in uh, in different ways so it's not just money and and you know the practical things and material things but it's also um, a sense of ambition that can come through the idea that you're really reaching for the stars and that you're able to materialize your goals and it's really nice to see it you know next to these cards as well so honestly there's a lot of positive energy that is unfolding. Uh, just like I felt at the outset, Gemini, your year looks easy and nice, and there's a lot of good stuff happening. Moving on to July, we have the road and the garden and then the bear. So the garden is a card of community. It tends to be associated with the public. And when I see the bear next to it, it tends to point to influence. So again, there is another idea of outreach. It's looking Gemini like this idea of outreach, of being out there in the world is um, a key theme of your year, of your astro clock. Uh, the road here can be about pursuing different people and places. It could also be uh, going into um, 
uh, these places and I'm thinking you know in terms of your outreach here it's about breaking into certain communities and I think with the bear uh, you're gonna find that you can take up a position of influence where you're sort of authoritative or a go-to person um, your creative works can be well received or your work and your business your service whether you are employed or you work for yourself it can get quite a bit of outreach and you could sort of take on like a strong position within the marketplace or the niche within which you operate so these are really good cards in another sense Gemini it's possible that you face up to some competition and the reason I say that is because we have the whip next to it now when we see the Sun and tower it's very likely that you're able to beat the competition or at least maintain your position um, the tower is another one of those cards of dominance because it has to do with authority with government with corporations it has to do with the ivory tower if you like and management so the idea of reaching the top is very much indicated by these cards yes this can mean vying for the position it can mean competition but the sun is up to the whip the sun is a very bright card and it can challenge the whip at least in the way I see it. So really seeing these cards together, very interesting ideas that are coming through your cards, Gemini, suggesting that you could penetrate certain markets, you know, and maintain like a position of dominance or establish some kind of influence, you know, within, within this environment, whether it's for your business or socially or in other ways. Uh, so very interesting cards. Uh, another way we can read actually both of them is that with the bear and tower, um, you have access to certain people in power or certain decision makers. And uh, if you need their support, you know, it looks like you could get it. And um, the whip can be a bit challenging here, uh, but the sun really helps overcome it. So if initially you sort of don't feel like you can talk to this person or that person or there's been something between the two of you uh, then you're able to overcome that and uh, you know maintain that connection on this note Gemini the whip can point to a conflict um, I'm not seeing people cards here but we do have a lot of people cards before uh, so it can sort of pull some of that energy into the triplet and uh, and suggest that maybe an issue comes up uh, but again with the sun and tower uh, these are beautiful cards of healing and even forgiveness and so i think that whatever challenges brought by the whip are going to be overcome so very nice cards moving on to september we have the letter coffin and lily interesting so this can take on a couple of different meanings the coffin is the main card that affects this triplet not only because it's in the middle but because of the energy it brings and because of the other two cards and you know their qualities um, so the coffin is an ending and it can also put things on hold it can also mean feeling tired and stressed and i think the health aspect can come through because we have the lily now the letter with the coffin and lily can mean that you're waiting for some news and that it sort of drags a little bit because both the coffin and lily are slow and we see this drag element going into October as well before things kick off in November so it looks like here Gemini there's a bit of a waiting game where things slow down a little bit maybe not a bad idea in view of all, all the stuff that's been going on here uh, but it's sort of in October it might sort of stress you out a little bit it starts to get to you uh, but in uh, in September things are on hold maybe the news doesn't come through um, you're waiting you could also be stressed out and wanting to take a break uh, but it is possible also Gemini that you decide to end something and uh, you know you make an announcement of that alternatively the cards could be advising you to hang on and not announce things yet so you're gonna have to tell me how you feel it's gonna play out and if you're feeling stressed and tired by September, which I think I would totally understand, you know, you do want to take time out, try to negotiate some time off, uh, you know, from the people around you, uh, whatever you do, um, or whoever is implied. Uh, so here things uh, slow down a little bit in September. It sort of drags on into October. 
we have the tree, clouds, and uh, mouse. So the tree is also a slow card. It's not a negative card, it's a very bright card. But the clouds and mouse are somewhat challenging. Uh, they cause a bit of stress and tension. Um, the, the clouds in particular is uh, psychological, so it points to thoughts and thinking. So you could be thinking, well, where, what's happening? You know, why is it dragging? Why is it not moving? And, uh, you know, we see it next to September, so there is a continuation of this theme. Um, so again, you could sort of be feeling like you don't have control over this and it's stressing you out and it's annoying you and uh, you might feel like time is being wasted. So I suggest, uh, Gemini, since it doesn't look like you can do much about this during these months, I suggest that you take time out for your well-being. Both the tree, uh, actually all three, the tree, coffin and lily can uh, highlight, each of them on their own can highlight the idea of health. So I'm thinking maybe the you know feeling a little bit under the weather feeling stressed out could really come through between September and October so I was saying uh, you know use the time to rest to slow down uh, you know step back a little bit try to take perspective try to let go uh, you know and tune into your own sort of little world you know it might be a good thing to do while you wait while uh, you know things are unraveling now, November continues a little bit with these ideas, except we have the stork. So the snake and book is another combination uh, that uh, implies the idea of things being on hold. Specifically, the snake and book have in common the idea of secrecy. So it sounds like things are closed off, right? And so this uh, very much aligns with what we saw in October and September. The good news is that stor the stork comes in here it's also the last card of the line, so it opens the book. The stork is a card of activity, of change. So things that were on hold are going to open up. So it sounds like uh, between September and November, things are on hold and a little bit out of reach. And I think this is going to stress you out a little bit, Gemini. It's going to cause you to be impatient and annoyed. Uh, but towards the end of November, maybe even December, we have the bird card. Um, this situation comes back into play and whatever was on hold uh, comes back into play and uh, the news comes through if that's what you were waiting on or well, most probably because of the letter and the book and the bird nice nice um, so um, be patient until it unravels towards November December okay so very clear um, messages coming through here and uh, you know I really like how your astro clock has uh, chunks of, uh, of themes, you know. So earlier on, we had all of this uh, redirection and uh, important opportunities between January and April. Between May and uh, July, August, there is a focus on people, so it's more outward. And then between September and November, there is like a lull and things are a little bit on hold and possibly out of your hands. And then we wrap up with December. So the bird is a communication card. And with the house, I tend to read that as some kind of announcement. And we've got the man in here, probably pointing to uh, the person who makes the announcement, or uh, you know, perhaps it's about him, or there's something with him, or you, know, you meet with him. Uh, the bird and, and house can suggest that. So uh, it's, it's clear that we have uh, like a, a reopening after this phase of, of quietness, of things not really moving. And uh, in December, there is news again, there's communication again, uh, negotiations, even get togethers and, uh, uh, you know, even friendships. So this can, you know, I'm not implying anything about what area this is happening in. It can be in your work life, in your personal life, you know, in other areas of your life. But the dynamic and the unfolding is really clear. Uh, so these are these are really nice cards, uh, Gemini. I'm really impressed with your year. It's mostly positive. Um, the, there there isn't uh, much drama. There aren't uh, big problems. Um, there is a lot of exciting um, opportunity that comes your way. Uh, it sounds like you're in a, a position to redirect uh, yourself in certain ways uh, to break through. Um, into new areas, new avenues. Creativity is highlighted. A positive self-direction is highlighted. Uh, good finances is highlighted. And the idea of, uh, you know, becoming authoritative in certain, in certain areas is also highlighted. 
so it's very very exciting uh, it's really just this uh, these couple of months here two three months possibly for you know where there's a bit of a, a slowdown and I think in contrast to everything else uh, earlier it's uh, it's gonna you're probably gonna feel it but but I think it's it's sort of a good thing after all of the things uh, that have happened before in the year it's in a, in a sense it's pretty active because there's so much that is happening uh, for you so again not a not a bad idea to sort of kick back a little bit here or to sort of you know let things a little bit hands off you know uh, just taking a step back and taking care of yourself so Gemini let me know how you like uh, this reading leave me your thoughts and comments and again I'm very excited to start the forecast the monthly forecast uh, with you so I hope you'll stick around for the for the months to come and uh, very best of luck with this uh, and I'd certainly be interested to know Gemini what kind of visions uh, you're having for the 2023 let me know how these uh, ideas and this reading resonate with that I I'd be I'd be curious to know if you're willing to share so thank you so much for tuning in Gemini. Uh, I'm looking forward to our next readings together and until then take very good care of yourself.